Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is vowing to, quote, finish the job in his country's ongoing war on Hamas. Israel says it is giving Hamas until the start of Ramadan to release the remaining Israeli hostages, or it will be forced to launch its offensive on the southern city of Rafah. Rafah is now home to more than one million displaced Palestinians who have fled south in an attempt to stay out of harm's way. Many Western allies, including the United States, have called on Israel to protect civilians. Dan Raviv is an author and Middle East expert. He joins us now. Uh, Dan, thanks so much for joining us. Talk to us about, you know, with all of this international criticism of a plan to invade Rafah, what would Israel moving forward with its plan do to its standing in the region and, and really around the world? Hey, Lilia, I feel that the Biden administration did put up, uh, well, maybe even a red light, but certainly a yellow light of caution to the Israelis. Quite publicly, President Biden, Secretary of State Blinken and other officials here in Washington telling Israel, you cannot go into the last remaining city in Gaza that you haven't yet invaded to get rid of Hamas, not until you have a definite plan for all the civilians. As you said, Lilia, more than a million Palestinians have have fled their homes, they're living in tents, they're getting some foreign aid, uh, but where are they supposed to go next? They really don't know. The Israelis say, well, well, we'll move you north. So now we have a date from the Israelis, the beginning of Ramadan. We take that to be March 10th. The Israelis say they will move in, uh, as Prime Minister Netanyahu said, to finish the job, which most of the world considers really ugly and questioning the righteousness of this war. But the Israelis are determined to finish it Although the word from Israel is, if Hamas would release all the hostages, and Israel also wants Hamas to surrender its governing power in Gaza, then the war would be over. That's what Israel yeah. says. Right. And, um, I mean, this is unsurprising. The Israeli cabinet unanimously voted against the unilateral recognition of a Palestinian state. Uh, but given the state of things, how significant is this? Well, Lilia, did you notice that, that that was a reaction to reports from here in Washington, some press reports, apparently some Biden administration officials leaked to the notion that the Biden administration would recognize a state of Palestine uh, before we know what the borders are, what the size would be, without even asking Israel for some agreement that uh, the parts of the West Bank and Gaza maybe could be a state of Palestine. Kind of a mystery what it would entail but it would have been symbolic and encouraging the Palestinians that eventually they could have a state. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the U.S. is firmly against Hamas. They think that maybe the West Bank run by the Palestinian Authority could also take over the Gaza Strip. Mm -hmm. Israel was deeply offended, and that's why the cabinet voted unanimously to reject the idea. Uh, the U.S. ambassador in Jerusalem, Jack Lew, he actually said last night that's not what the U.S. is planning to do, at least not right now. I see. Well, uh, demonstrators in Tel Aviv called for Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's resignation. This happened over the weekend during protests. What more can you tell us about these calls and how the prime minister is responding, if at all? Well, Lily, as you know, that's been going on for about a year, even before this war between Israel and Hamas. Uh, about a year ago, the big issue emerged in which Netanyahu wanted to change and reduce the powers of the Supreme Court. That was considered a selfish move because he himself is on trial for alleged fraud and bribery. So now the hostage families, the families of the 134 Israelis and some others kidnapped by Hamas, they've been coming out not just on Saturday nights, uh, because that was the pattern last year, but more and more often demanding that the government put the hostage release first in the priority list, negotiate with Qatar, Egypt, make any deal you have to, those families say, and they have really turned against Prime Minister Netanyahu. Now, he doesn't have to call an election for a couple of years, and he indicated this past weekend he doesn't plan to. But a lot of people who follow Israeli politics, and I'm among them, think that after the huge security failure of October 7th, the humiliation, frankly, of the Israeli forces and intelligence, I think Netanyahu is toast. One way or another, I think he will fall from power this year. And that's what the hostage families are calling for. Yeah, so it's what I heard a lot while in Israel. Dan, thank you so much for joining us today.